This is the second part of creating a procedural pathway generator in Blender 3.0. So if you haven't watched the first part, then you can watch that by clicking the i button. So here is what we left off in the previous video and in this video we are gonna add more effects to this plane. So let us see how we can give this path a different material and this ground a different material. So for that, I'm gonna go to the shading tab. And I'm gonna give this a new material. And now let's add an attribute node. And now here we can type the attribute and it was path. So I'm gonna type path. And now let's preview this attribute node by holding Ctrl Shift and left clicking on that. And this only works if you have enabled the node wrangler add on in the preferences. So if you haven't enabled that, then what are you doing man go ahead and enable it but you can see that nothing's happening and it's not because we are using eevee because in blender 3.0 eevee does support attributes which is pretty cool so the reason why it's not showing up is because you remember that we set this output to float so if we change it to color then you can see it works but now you won't be able to see that in the weight paint. So if you want, you can leave it to float and then output this again and change this one to color and create a second attribute. But I don't think that we are gonna need to preview it in the weight paint. So I'm gonna just change this to color. And also you can rename this output. So I'm gonna rename it to path attribute and now let's go to object mode and now you can see the attribute so now let's go to the shading tab and now let us see how we can use this attribute to give this path a different color and this ground a different color so i'm gonna use a mix rgb node for that and now i'm gonna use this attribute as the factor for this mix rgb node and now i'm gonna preview it and for the first color, I'm gonna give this a green color like that. And for the second color, I'm gonna go with a orange yellowish color. And now I'm gonna use this for the base color. And now let's preview the principal BSDF by again holding Ctrl Shift and left clicking on that. And now you can see that our path has a different color and the ground has a different color. And you can also add a color ramp and tweak this. And to demonstrate how it works, I'm using this mix RGB node to give this a different color and this a different color. But you can also use this attribute as the factor for the mix shader to mix two different shaders, one for the ground and one for the path. So now let's go back to the geometry nodes workspace. But this is still a problem. And that is, if we change these values, you can see that the effect doesn't work really well. So let us see how we can fix it. So I'm gonna disconnect this for a moment so that the plane is not displaced. And now you can see that when we are not displacing the plane, the effect is working really well. So the problem occurs when we displace the plane. So what we can do to fix it is let's add a node called capture attribute and this node captures the attribute and also it has a few more options so i'm gonna connect this to the capture attribute node and now i'm gonna output this to the group output node and now this is the same as if we just output this to the group output node but now when we have this capture attribute node we can move it before displacing the plane and now i'm gonna connect this to the group input node and now i'm gonna output this to the group output node and now it should do the work so now let's change these values and you can see that it's working pretty well so now let's displace this plane but everywhere else the path so to displace this plane you can just duplicate these nodes and set this to add 
and use a noise texture to displace this plane but instead I'm going to use the Z displacement node group that I created in my geometry nodes for beginners tutorial and it's a bit better and also easier to use. So if you haven't watched that video then you can watch that by clicking the i button or by following the link down in the description. Or if you have bought the project files then you can use the same node group from there. So I'm going to go to file and go to append. And here is my tutorial project file. So I'm going to double click on that. Then go to node tree. And now, and now here we have the Z displacement node group. So now from here you can append this Z displacement node group. Or if you want to use it from the project files that you have bought, then you can also do that. So here are the procedural pathway generator project files. So double click on this blend file and now go to node tree and here you also have the Z displacement node group. So now select that Z displacement node group and click on append. So now we can press shift A and go to group and now we can add the Z displacement node group. And now I'm going to connect that here. And now let's add a noise texture to displace this plane. So I'm going to add that in and now we can plug this into the displacement and you can also control the strength of this by using this slider. But I've spelled a strong so I'm going to select this node and I'm going to press tab and now I'm going to rename this input and it is GTH. So now I'm going to press tab again to go out of this. So now I'm going to decrease down the scale of this noise texture to something like this. But now this displacement is everywhere. So now how do we stop it from displacing on the path? So for that we can just use this attribute for the strength. And now you can see that it's only displacing on the path but we want the opposite of this. So we can add a color ramp and plug that here and flip the color ramp. And now you can see that our plane is displacing everywhere else the path. But now the strength slider is gone. So now how do we control the strength of this? So for that you can add a math node after the color ramp and change it to multiply. And now you can use this factor to control the strength of this. So I'm going to leave it to 1. And if we move our curve, you can see that the path is not updating. And that's because in the object info node, it's set to original. So that means when we change the location of our curve, we have to apply the location in order to make the changes but we don't want to do that so what we can do is we can change it to relative and now when we move when we move our curve you can see that the path is updating in real time and now let us see how we can distribute something on this plane but not on the path so you can do that in the same geometry nodes tree but it will start to get messy so instead what I like to do is to add another geometry nodes modifier for the instancing. So now let's distribute points on this plane. So for that I'm going to add a distribute points on faces node and connect that here. And you can see that our plane is converted to points but we can't see the plane. So what we can do is we can add a join geometry node. And now connect this geometry to the join geometry node and also these points to the join geometry node. And now let's preview this join geometry node by holding Alt Shift and left clicking on that. And now let's add an instance on points node so we can instance something on these points. So for this example, I'm going to just use a simple cube. And I'm going to use this as the instance. 
So if you want to learn instancing in detail, then I recommend watching my geometry notes tutorial on instancing. You can click the i button to see that or you can follow the link down in the description. So now these instances are so big so I'm gonna scale this down. And also I'm gonna decrease down the density a bit. And now I'm gonna plug this density input into the group input node. And now we can control that value from here. And now how do we prevent these cubes from this path? So for that we can add a math node here and set it to multiply and now we can also plug this into the group input node and now we can click this button to use an attribute for that. So I'm going to use the path attribute that we created and now you can see that the cubes are appearing on the path but we want the opposite of this. So we can add the color ramp and flip the color ramp and you can also play with these handles if you want and now you can see that these cubes are not appearing on this plane and how cool is that so instead of these cubes you can scatter anything you want like grass so if you want to scatter grass then you can watch my video so now I'm going to select this plane and I'm going to select this first geometry nodes modifier and now let's go ahead and group this node so that it's easier to understand and also easier to work with. And also if we group these nodes then we can later easily reuse these. So I'm going to select these nodes which make this path and then I'm going to press Ctrl G to group these nodes. And now all of these nodes are moved in a node group and we can press tab to go out of this and now you can see that all of those nodes are grouped in a single node and when we do this it becomes so easy to work with so now i'm gonna press tab again and now i'm gonna rename these inputs so the first one is path width so i'm gonna rename it to path width and the second one is path depth so i'm gonna rename that to path depth and now I'm going to connect a few more inputs to this group input node. So I'm going to connect this object info node. So we can choose any object that we want. And we can also move this input above these inputs. And I'm also going to connect this subdivide mesh node so that we can control the level of subdivision. And I'm going to rename it to sub subdivision level. And also I'm going to rename this input. So I'm going to rename it to path attribute. And the type of data is set to float but we want to set it to color. So now we have a few more inputs. So now I'm going to connect these inputs into the group input node as well. And now I'm going to move this input above these inputs like that and also we can rename this node group so i'm gonna rename it to proximity displacer something like that because it displaces the geometry by the proximity of the object that we have selected and also i'm gonna move this here i'm just organizing this a little bit just like this and now this is looking pretty good and also this is pretty easy to work with. And now you can also save this blend file and append this geometry nodes tree and reuse this as I showed you in the start of the video. So now one thing I want to show you before ending this tutorial is right now we are using this curve to displace this plane but you can use any object that you want. So let's say I'm going to add a UV sphere and I'm going to scale it up like that and now and now in the object we can choose that sphere. And now you can see that our plane is displacing by this sphere. How cool is that? So you can not only use this to create paths but whatever you want. And it is pretty cool. So we can also add let's say a cube 
and choose that cube from here and you can also go into the node group and in the geometry proximity we set this to edges but we can change that to faces so now i'm gonna delete this cube and i'm gonna set it back to that curve and where did it go and uh, here it is and i'm gonna press tab and i'm gonna change it to edges so that's pretty much it but if you're using adaptive subdivision for micro polygon displacement on this plane then it can cause a pretty big problem so if you want to know more about that and also how to fix it then you have to wait for a future video until then give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of my new videos i'll be back